Cujo's Treaty. Articles of pacification with the Maroons of Trelawney Town, concluded March 1, 1738. In the name of God, Amen, whereas Captain Cujo, Captain, Akumpong, Captain Johnny, Captain Cuffy, Captain Quaker, and several other Negroes, their dependents and adherents, have been in a state of wear and hostility, for several years past, against our sovereign Lord the King, and the inhabitants of this island, and whereas peace and friendship among mankind, and the preventing of effusion of blood, is agreeable to God, consonant to reason, and desired by every good man, and whereas his. Majesty George II, King of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, and of Jamaica Lord, Defender of the Faith, and Sea, has by his letters patent, dated February 24, 1738, in the twelfth year of his reign, granted full power and authority to John Guthrie and Francis Sadler, Esquires, to negotiate and finally conclude a treaty of peace and friendship with the aforesaid Captain Cujo, and the rest of his captains, adherents, and others his men. They mutually, sincerely, and amicably, have agreed to the following articles. First, that all hostilities shall cease on both sides forever. Secondly, that the said Captain Cujo, the rest of his captains, adherents, and men shall forever hereafter in a perfect state of freedom and liberty, excepting those who have been taken by them, or fled to them, within two years last past, if such are willing to return to their said masters and owners, with full pardon and indemnity from their said masters or owners for what is past, provided always that, if they are not willing to return, they shall remain in subjection to Captain Cujo, and in friendship with us, according to the foreman tenor of this treaty. Thirdly, that they shall enjoy and posses, for themselves and posterity forever, all the land situate and lying between Trelawney Town and the cockpits, to the amount of 1500 acres, bearing northwest from the said Trelawney Town. Fourthly, that they shall have liberty to plant the said lands with coffee, cocoa, ginger, tobacco, and cotton, and to breed cattle, hogs, goats, or any other flock, and dispose of the produce or increase of the said commodities to the inhabitants of this island, provided always, that when they bring the said commodities to market, they shall apply fist to the customs, or any other magistrate of the respective parishes where they expose their goods to sale, for a license to vend the same. Fifthly, that Captain Cujo, and all the captain's adherents, and people now in subjection to him, shall all live together within the bounds of Trelawney Town, and that they have liberty to hunt where they shall think fit, except within three miles of any settlement, crawl, or pen, provided always, that in case the hunters of Captain Cujo and those of other settlements meet, then the hogs to be equally divided between both parties. Sixthly, that the said Captain Cujo, and his successors, do use their best endeavors to take, kill, suppress, or destroy, either by themselves, or jointly with any other number of men, commanded on that service by His Excellency the Governor, or Commander-in-Chief for the time being, all rebels wheresoever they be, throughout this island, unless they submit to the same terms of accommodation granted to Captain Cujo, and his successors. Seventhly, that in case this island be invaded by any foreign enemy, the said Captain Cujo, and his successors herein after named or to be appointed, shall then, upon notice given, immediately repair to any place the Governor for the time being shall appoint, in order to repel the said invaders with his or their utmost force, and to submit to the orders of the commander-in-chief on that occasion. Eighthly, that if any white man shall do any manner of injury to Captain Cujo, his successor, or any of his or their people, they shall apply to any commanding officer or magistrate in the neighborhood for justice, and in case Captain Cujo, or any of his people, shall do any injury to any whiter person, he shall submit himself, or deliver up such offenders to justice. Ninthly, that if any negro shall hereafter run away from their masters or owners, and shall fall into Captain Cujo's hands, they shall immediately be sent back to the chief magistrate of the next parish where they are taken, and these that bring them are to be satisfied for their trouble, as the legislature shall appoint. The assembly granted a premium of 30 shillings for each fugitive slave returned to his owner by the Maroons, besides expenses. Tenthly, that all Negroes taken, since the raising of this party by Captain Cujo's people, shall immediately be returned. Eleventhly, that Captain Cujo, and his successors, shall wait on His Excellency, or the Commander-in-Chief for the time being, every year, if thereunto required. Twelfth, that Captain Cujo, during his life, 
and the captain succeeding him, shall have full power to inflict any punishment they think proper for crimes committed by their men among themselves, death only excepted. In which case, if the captain thinks they deserve death, he shall be obliged to bring them before any justice of the peace. Who shall order proceedings on their trial equal to those of other free negroes? 13. That Captain Cujo with his people, repeat, subjects, peoples, shall cut, clear, and keep open, large and convenient roads from Trelawney Town to Westmoreland and St. James's, and if possible to St. Elizabeth's. 14. That two white men, to be nominated by His Excellency, or the commander and chief for the time being, shall constantly live and reside with Captain Cujo and his successors, in order to maintain a friendly correspondence, not dominance. Correspondence see waiting. These are ambassadors, not governors, with the inhabitants of this island. 15. That Captain Cujo shall, during his life, be chief commander in Trelawney Town, after his decease the command to devolve on his brother, Captain Akumpong, and in case of his decease, on his next brother Captain Johnny, and, failing him, Captain Cuffy shall succeed, who is to be succeeded by Captain Quaco, and after all their demises, the governor, or commander-in-chief for the time being, shall appoint, from time to time, whom he thinks fit for that command. Quayo's Treaty The Windward Treaty comprised of 14 articles. Ain't that all hostilities shall cease on both sides for ever, amen. 2. That the said Captain Quayo, and his people, shall have a certain quantity of land given to them, in order to raise provisions. Hogs, fowls, goats, or whatever flock they may think proper, sugar canes excepted, saving for their hogs, and to have liberty to sell the same. 3. That four white men shall constantly live and reside with them in their town, in order to keep a good correspondence with the inhabitants of this island. 4. That the said Captain Quayo, and his people, shall be ready on all commands the governor, or the commander-in-chief for the time being, shall send him, to suppress and destroy all other party or parties of rebellious negroes, that now are, or from time to time gather together to settle in any part of this island, and shall bring in such other negroes as shall from time to time run away from their respective owners, from the date of these articles. 5. That the said Captain Quayo, and his people, shall also be ready to assist His Excellency the Governor for the time being, in case of any invasion, and shall put himself, with all his people that are able to bear arms, under the command of the General or Commander of such forces, appointed by His Excellency to defend the island from the said invasion. 6. That the said Captain Quayo, and all his people, shall be in subjection to His Excellency the Governor for the time being, and the said Captain Quayo shall, once every year or oftener, appear before the Governor, if thereunto required. 7. That in case any of the hunters belonging to the inhabitants of this island, and the hunters belonging to Captain Quayo, should meet in order to hinder disputes, Captain Quayo will order his people to let the inhabitants' hunters have the hog. 8. That in case Captain Quayo, or his people, shall take up runaway negroes that shall abscond from their respective owners, and shall be paid for so doing as the legislature shall appoint. 9. That in case Captain Quayo, and his people, should be disturbed by a greater number of rebels than he is able to fight, that then he shall be assisted by as many white people as the governor for the time being shall think proper. 10. That in case any of the negroes belonging o Captain Quayo shall be guilty of any crime or crimes that may deserve death he shall deliver him up to the next magistrate, in order to be tried as other negroes are, but small crimes he may punish himself. 11. That in case any white man, or other the inhabitants of this island, shall disturb or annoy any of the people, hogs, flock, or whatever goods may belong to the said Captain Quayo, or any of his people, when they come down to the settlements to vend the same, upon due complaint made to a magistrate, he or they shall have justice done them. 12. That neither Captain Quayo, nor any of his people, shall bring any hogs, fowls, or any stock or provisions, to sell to the inhabitants, without a ticket from under the hand of one or more of the white men residing in their town. 13. That Captain Quayo, nor any of his people, shall hunt within three miles of any settlement. 14. That in case Captain Quayo should die, that then the command of his people shall descend to Captain Tomboy, and at his death to descend to Captain Apong, and at his death Captain Blackwall shall succeed, and at his death Clash shall succeed, and, when he dies, the governor or commander-in-chief for the time being shall appoint whom he thinks proper.